In this example, we're asked to use undetermined coefficients to find a particular solution to the given linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation. So even though for this question we're only asked to give a particular solution given by y of t, we're actually going to find the general solution and then only give a particular solution for y of t. The method of undetermined coefficients is used to solve a differential equation in this form here, which is a linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation. But the general solution is given by y of t, where we have y of t equals y sub c of t, which is the complementary function, which is sometimes given as c sub one times y sub one plus c sub two times y sub two, and then plus big y sub p of t, where big y sub p of t is a particular solution. So again, even though our question only asks for a particular solution given by big y sub p of t, we're going to find the general solution. And we'll see in this example why it is important that we should always find the complementary function before determining a particular solution. The steps we'll follow is step one, we'll solve the corresponding homogeneous differential equation by setting g of t equal to zero. This will give us the complementary function y sub c of t. Step two, we'll guess a form of a particular solution to the original differential equation with undetermined coefficients. And then step three, using this function, we'll perform substitution into the original differential equation and solve for the undetermined coefficients to find the general solution, which again is the sum of the complementary function and a particular solution. So again, the first step is to solve the corresponding homogeneous differential equation, which would be y double prime plus seven times y prime plus 12y equals zero. And we can solve this homogeneous differential equation using the characteristic equation ar squared plus br plus c equals zero, where a equals one, b equals seven, and c equals 12. So we'd have r squared plus seven r plus 12 equals zero. And solve this by factoring. The factors of r squared are r and r. The factors of 12 that add to seven are positive four and positive three. Notice how we have two distinct real solutions. We have r sub one equals negative four and r sub two equals negative three. So remember when the characteristic equation has two distinct real solutions, the general solution to the homogeneous differential equation would be in this form here, which tells us the complementary function y sub c of t is equal to c sub one times e raised to the power of negative four t plus c sub two times e raised to the power of negative three t. Now we'll work on determining a particular solution given by big y sub p of t. So step two, we guess the form of a particular solution with undetermined coefficients, which means we're looking for a function where its second derivative plus seven times its first derivative plus 12 times original function equals three times e raised to the power of negative three t. So we should be thinking that big Y sub p of t will be in the form of a times e raised to the power of negative three t. Here's a list of forms of big Y sub p of t given the form of the right side of the differential equation given by g of t. But this is an example of why it's important to always find the complementary function before determining a particular solution. Notice how the form of this term actually already appears in the complementary function here, which means for big Y sub p of t, we need to include an extra factor of t. So this is not going to be the form of big Y sub p of t again because this form already appears in the complementary function. Big Y sub P of T is going to be in the form of A times T times E raised to the power of negative three T. And this should remind us of when solving a homogeneous differential equation in this form using a characteristic equation, when we had two real equal roots, notice how the second term again had an extra factor of T. And now before we perform substitution into the original differential equation to find the value of a, we need to find the first and second derivative of big Y sub P of T. So the first derivative of big Y sub P of T, notice how it's going to require the product rule, 
where we'd have the first function, at, times the derivative of the second function, which would be e to the negative 3t times negative 3, or negative 3 e to the negative 3t, plus the second function, which is e to the negative 3t, times the derivative of at with respect to t, which would be a. So simplifying the first derivative would be negative 3at e to the negative 3t plus a e to the negative 3t. Let's continue on the next slide. We now need to find the second derivative. So we'll have to apply that product rule to this first term. Let's let negative 3at be the first function, f, and the exponential be the second function, g. So we have the first function, negative 3at, times the derivative of the second function, which would be negative 3e to the negative 3t, plus the second function, which is e to the negative 3t, times the derivative of the first function, which would be negative 3a. And then plus the derivative of a e to the negative 3t, which would be a e to the negative 3t times negative 3, or minus 3a e to the negative 3t. Notice how these two terms are like terms, though. So we have y sub p double prime of t is equal to here we have positive nine a t e to the negative three t, and here we'll have minus six a e to the negative three t. Now we'll perform substitution into the original differential equation. So y double prime is this function here, nine a t e to the negative three t minus six a e to the negative three t, and we have plus seven times y prime, which is this function here. So negative three a t e to the negative three t plus a e to the negative three t plus 12 times y, which is a t e to the negative three t equals three e to the negative three t. Let's go ahead and clear the parentheses. So we have nine a t e to the negative three t minus six a e to the negative three t. We have minus 21 a t e to the negative three t plus seven a e to the negative three t plus 12 a t e to the negative three t equals three e to the negative three t. Now let's combine like terms. Here we have nine a t e to the negative three t minus 21 a t e to the negative three t, and then plus 12 a t e to the negative three t. Let's combine these three like terms, we get zero, and these two terms are also like terms, which would just give us one a, or a, e to the negative three t equals three e to the negative three t. And therefore a must equal three. So if a equals three, we now know a particular solution, big Y sub p of t is equal to, again, if a is three, we have three t e to the negative three t. So going back to our first slide, we found the complementary function Y sub c of t, and then we found a particular solution Y sub p of t, which means now we can form the general solution. The general solution is given by y of t equals y sub c of t plus big Y sub p of t. And therefore, the general solution is y of t equals c sub one e to the negative four t plus c sub two times e raised to the power of negative three t plus three t e to the negative three t. So while this is the general solution, remember our question only asked for a particular solution given by big Y sub P of T, which should be this function here. So going back to the very first slide, we only enter three T e to the negative three T. I hope you found this helpful.